recall that we are dropped back into this slash pricing route. Now on this page, we wanna render a bunch of different uh, pricing options, each with a button that allows us to subscribe to that price. We probably want options for both monthly and annual, but for now, we'll just try to render out our three tiers of startup, business, and enterprise, and we wanna render those out with buttons that will bring us through the checkout flow. The first thing we wanna do is write a query to fetch those prices from the Stripe API. And even before we build the controller, I wanna experiment in the Rails console with the Stripe API using the Stripe Ruby gem to see how it's gonna to feel to fetch the list of prices and take a look at the data that we're gonna get back from that. So if I say prices is Stripe price.list, then we're gonna get back a list of prices. I can say prices.data.first. This is gonna give me a price object. Now the price object includes reference to the product's ID, but it does not give me any of the actual product data. Now we do see the lookup key for this price is enterprise annual. We also see a bunch of other information around like how much it costs, that it's recurring. In fact, that it's recurring interval is yearly. So we can pull off the unit amount, the currency, the recurring interval, and the lookup key directly from here. In fact, we get the price ID. This is really the most important part because we wanna use that ID when we're creating the subscription or the checkout session later. So we get back these prices, but because the product is not giving us back the full data about the product, we need to fetch the product in addition to the price. Now, one way we could do this is we could uh, fetch the list of prices and then iterate over each of those and fetch the product, but that's gonna introduce extra API calls into this server route, which is already sensitive to some latency. So what we wanna do instead is um, use a feature of the API called expand. So I'm gonna say expand data.product. Now this is gonna allow me to fetch prices with the product fully expanded. So now we can see that the product is not just its ID. Remember that up here, we were just getting back the product ID. Now we're getting back the full product. And what's nice about that is we see the name, we see the, the description, and we have a bunch of other information on the product itself. So now we could say like price.data.first dot product dot name, for instance. And we can see that this is the enterprise product. So between the price object and the product object, we have enough information to render our pricing page. At a minimum, what we wanna do is expand. Now, let's try to figure out how we can pull just the prices that we care about. Because if we look at prices.data.count, right now we're getting back 10 prices, and that's just because that's the limit uh, the default limit. So if we were to say like limit 50 here, we're gonna get back 50 different prices. And so that's way more prices than we need to render on the page. And also the more prices that we need to return or fetch from the API, the slower it's gonna go. So technically what we wanna do here is we wanna fetch exactly the prices that we need. So by default, we're going to have some interval. So let's say recurring uh, interval is monthly. So only give us the monthly prices back. So now our, our data count is still 10 because we have more than 10 monthly prices. And to filter this and be very targeted and very specific, we can use those lookup keys. So the lookup keys that we talked about in that episode around lookup key and transfer lookup key, this is where the power really comes in because we can say lookup keys and pass a list of lookup keys that we wanna use for our pricing page. So in this case, maybe startup, startup annual, enterprise, enterprise annual. And then when we hit enter, now our price data that comes back is just two prices because there's only one monthly startup price and one monthly enterprise price. And then if we were to switch uh, our interval from month to year, we're gonna get back two different prices. Okay, so we see two prices now. So if we were to look at price.data.first, now we're gonna see the yearly price for the enterprise annual plan of $480 a year. All right, so let's copy this query, and this is what we're gonna use inside of our controller to fetch prices. All right, so let's generate a new controller. We'll call it pricings, and it's gonna have a show page. We have to add it to our routes file. 
resource pricing. And in here, we're gonna add that query that we just created and store it off into a variable called prices. So we want to expand data.product so that we have the full product. And then for lookup keys, we wanna have a list of lookup keys. Now, it turns out in the, in the terminal, I was just fetching startup and enterprise, but we actually want also um, business. So that should fetch some prices uh, for us. Now, instead of just hard coding in the interval here, I'm gonna read that off of the query string params so that we can pass that in and we'll default to month. That way we can sort of configure that from the front end and if we wanted to, we could add some, some UI component that let us toggle between month and year. All right, so now we have the data. Let's go to our show route for our pricing page. Now, what we could do is just say uh, at prices.toJSON here, just to get some data on the page. So if we, we refresh the page here, now we see a bunch of data, it's spit out, it is not pretty, it doesn't look that, <laughs> that nice, um, but for now, that's what we're getting. This entire page is quite a bit of HTML. I use Tailwind UI to give us a very nice UI that we can print out very easily. So let's look at what we get by default. Okay, so we have a pricing page. Right now, it, um, I've got one tier in here. Um, it tells us the amount, the interval, description of the product, and uh, we've got some examples for a feature and some different variants for the button. So let's go through and wire this up. So for each of the tiers, we wanna iterate over those prices. So at prices that each do price and let's see. So now we have three different prices that are spitting out. We don't have the name or any of that set up. So let's go update the name. So again, through the price, we can access the product because we are expanding data.product. So we can say price.product.name and then we can refresh this. And now we see business, enterprise, and startup. It's kind of the opposite order that we wanna actually render it in. Um, but let's take a look at the, the amounts here before we go too far. So price.unit amount. Now this is by default is gonna be in the smallest denomination possible. So this is actually how many cents it is. So it's uh, this is something that we have to divide by 100. Now, if we were gonna have like an actual decimal, we would wanna divide by a float, but we're just keeping it simple, keeping everything as integers for now. And we also have access to the recurring intervals. So we're gonna say price.recurring.interval here. And so now we should see that this is per month, great. And let's check out if our query string thing is working. Let's switch that to year. Great, now we see 320 a year, 480 a year, 240 a year, et cetera. Um, that's just by changing the query string parameter. And we, if we wanted to, we could add a little toggle here that would control that and switch back, back and forth between the, the right thing. We've also got a description on the product. So we can say price.product.description. That can come in handy for logging out the actual description. Now we have a feature list. So at the time of this recording, products themselves don't have a great way to track the features. Now there is a, a brand new um, feature <laughs> coming to the API that'll allow you to enumerate the features of a product directly on the product object. This is something you'll be able to do from the dashboard through the API. But for now, the way that I've stored the features is on the metadata for the product. So long-term, you should be able to just call price.product.features and iterate over a list of strings. But for today, I'm going to um, uh, parse out price.product.metadata.features and then iterate over each of those. And that is just a string feature in my metadata for my products and now we can log that out here. All right, now we can see the, the features that are being logged out. Ah, uh, we're also seeing the array here and that's because I left an equals sign in the JSON.parse line. Okay, now we have these two variants for billing. Now, one of the other things that I stored on the metadata was whether or not I wanted to sort of highlight or recommend a specific product. So what I can do here is check like if 
price.product.metadata has most popular. Then I want to show this most popular or like recommended um, tab metadata. Okay, so business is the one that's recommended. Now we're kind of jumping around. We have like our lowest one over here and our recommended one is on the left. Let's go back to our controller and order the price data so that it's coming back in order of the unit amount. So we'll go back to pricing controller and we're gonna say dot data dot sort by and we're gonna pass in unit amount. That's just gonna sort on the server side, uh, the data, the like raw data that was returned from the API, which is totally fine since we just have three prices that we're getting back. All right, now let's work on our different variants down here for the buttons. We're gonna use the same logic and check to see if um, the product is most popular, then we're gonna use a more bold um, button. Otherwise, we will just have a more muted button for subscriptions. All right, so now we have sort of the layout that we we're looking for. It's wired up mostly. The last piece is that we want this link or whatever this button ends up being to create a checkout session and walk us through the onboarding flow for, uh, for collecting payment. Let's make it so that these links redirect us to a checkout page with the price ID inside of the query string parameters. We're gonna enter in price.id and we'll do this for both URLs. That way, when we click on these links, we are redirected to a slash checkout route. Now in a future episode, we'll go through and implement this so that we are redirected through to checkout. But for now, we know that we have that price ID and that is the key for creating a subscription. Now we're gonna use the combination of the customer that we already created in the database and that price ID so that we're redirecting to the correct checkout page with the correct user, et cetera. So at this point, what I wanted to do was talk about a more advanced concept with pricing pages and that is price testing. So say that you wanted to increase your startup price from $24 a month to $28 a month. One thing that you could do is using the startup lookup key, we could transfer the startup lookup key to a new price on the same product and our pricing page will reflect that. All right, so using the Stripe CLI, I'm gonna say Stripe prices list and we're gonna list the prices using the lookup keys for just the startup price. Now this is gonna to return to us the JSON for a price object. Now this is the price object that's currently rendering with $24 a month. So if we, what we wanna do now is we wanna create a brand new price. So we're gonna say Stripe prices create and our new unit amount is gonna be $28 and it's gonna still be um, recurring interval is gonna be monthly. And our lookup key is going to be stirred up and our transfer lookup key is gonna be true. That means take the lookup key from the existing price and move it to this new price. We can't have two prices with the same lookup key in the database, it's, it's unique. We also wanna attach it to the same product. So I'm gonna um, copy the product ID from the old price onto the new price. And we need a currency, which is gonna be USD. Now we've created a brand new price with the same lookup key as startup, and that is at the $28 price point. So when we refresh our page here, now we're fetching that brand new price. So we transfer the lookup key. We didn't have to deploy any new code. It's using those lookup keys to fetch the right prices that are being displayed on the page. That's really beautiful because oftentimes SaaS founders want to experiment with their pricing and it can be a pain to go deploy new code or figure out, make sure that everything is wired up correctly. Anyone who signed up on the old price, they'll still be on the old price. And everyone who signs up now will be signed up on this new price of $28 a month. So that's how we can do price testing with this model. It's very handy. Um, and that wraps up building a really powerful pricing page. Thanks so much for watching and we will see you in the next one. <laughs>